Hey guys, so today we are talking about Keemstar and H3, H3 Productions or Ethan Klein because really it comes down to him, H3 is a much larger production, but this is about Keemstar versus Ethan. So if you didn't know, Keemstar and Ethan have had a rivalry for some years now that has gotten very bitter and angry and they really hate each other. Um, so a couple, I think it was a year or so ago, Ethan posted a video called Content Nuke where he uh, basically <laughs> put out a, an hour long video talking about all the shit that Keemstar has done wrong, which was accusing someone of being a P word with no evidence bullying a Twitch streamer who was having mental health issues and was having manic episodes and ended up committing S, um, and more things. So, and then after that, they've gone back and forth a bunch. I honestly don't know all of the drama because it's like such a long, there's a video on YouTube about it and it's five hours long. And listen, I love you guys, but not that much. I don't have five hours to dedicate to this. Also, I pinched a nerve <laughs> in my back. Um last week and so I've been down for like four days in excruciating pain and today's the first day that I feel slightly better so I just didn't have time to fully research that but I don't think the old shit matters when we're talking about the new shit so much so let's get into it. Before getting into this video subscribe to my channel I upload twice a week and you should stick around it's fun here we do commentary we do whatever I'm feeling this day so let's get into it. So this goes back to my last video which was about uh, Trisha and Ethan Klein talking about Keemstar dating a 20 year old girl, 20 year old woman. He is a 40 year old man. She is 20 years old. Um, I talked about age gaps and just like the disgusting way he discussed their relationship on his podcast with Faze Banks and the gross things he said. Um, and I talked about how I think that age gaps when the younger person is just coming out of childhood, I guess you could say, like she's just, she's two years out of being legal um, are sus. And I think they're inappropriate, especially when the older person is 40 years old and has all this life experience and it leads to power imbalances even if you don't see them. Trisha Payne has posted a video about this. Ethan Klein talked about it on the H3 podcast. And after the H3 podcast went up, Keemstar posted a video on YouTube, uh, or sorry, on Twitter. He tagged both YouTube and Susan Wojcicki, is that her last name? Like the CEO of YouTube. Um, on his video and he started complaining about the double standards on YouTube and how it's unfair that Ethan Klein gets to talk like this about him and he can't say anything back. So in the video uh, that Keemstar posted on Twitter, he claims that after the content new thing happened, Keemstar started posting, sending pictures to Ethan, like tweeting at him pictures of horses, which is um, a dig at Ethan's wife, Ela Klein. The joke here apparently is that Eth that Ela Klein has a longer face and looks like a horse. So he would send, he sent pictures to Keemstar for like, or to Ethan Klein for like a year about this. And Keemstar claims that YouTube basically told him he needs to knock it off and stop bullying other content creators, or he could lose his uh, spot in the partnership program on YouTube, which is how you make money on YouTube. Now, again, there's no evidence on really either side here. So it's very hard to know what is factual and what isn't because Keemstar is not a reliable narrator. Obviously he's gonna tell you the side of the story that makes him sound better, but that's his story. So he says now he can't say anything back to Ethan Klein or he'll get banned. Um, he can't bully or harass him. You know, he talks about how it would be fine if we could like bully people back if they talk shit about you, but now that he can't. And um, he specifically mentions in the video that or in his video about Ethan Klein that Ethan had um, Keemstar's girlfriend call in. It was obviously fake, it's obviously a joke. They've done this joke before in the podcast, like James Charles calling in and stuff. And she, and Ethan had a conversation. In that conversation, she basically talked about how Keemstar had a small dick, allegedly. Obviously this was a joke. Obviously this wasn't Keemstar's girlfriend. And I mean like small dick jokes are like bottom of the barrel jokes, like, like they're not funny, but okay. Um, and so he specifically talked about that and he basically said that there's double standards about who violates the terms and services and he basically said in this video that he has sent YouTube tons of emails and proof of Ethan violating terms of service that he gets in trouble for and he wants something done about this. Now, he did delete this video, but it was up there. He tagged YouTube, he tagged YouTube's, he tagged Susan Wojcicki, so he really did run and tattle to mommy about <laughs> this podcast. And like, here's the thing. 
I have a few things to say about this. First of all, I don't know how much I believe about Keemstar being told to stop bullying fellow creators. I also think there is a difference between talking shit on a podcast, on a couple videos, and like sending and having your subscribers send horse images to someone to say that his wife is ugly. I don't know. To me, it's just like there's a difference between relentless bullying where like you're just going to continue messaging someone over and over again with this stuff and like talking shit about somebody on your podcast. I agree that there are lines that need to be not crossed, but I just don't think like a small dick joke is it. And at the same time, I don't know when Keemstar says like, oh, I'm not allowed to say anything back. I think that he's taking like, you know, when you tell someone something and they just take it too literally, like, I don't like it when you say this and then they're like, oh, well, I can't say anything anymore. I'm just like silenced. And like, he also talks a lot about how he's silenced and like, I have to break it to Keemstar that he has a platform with millions of followers. So he's not really silenced. And again, I think he's taking it too literally. I mean like, oh, I can never say anything about Ethan Klein again. And it's like, Keemstar has attacked and harassed multiple creators throughout his career. He has, like I said, bullied people live on his show and like said rude shit. So. I think the reason that YouTube got involved last time was because like they could see it happening on Twitter and they were like, okay, this is not a good look for us. Um, so now he feels like he can't say anything back. And like, I don't know what actually happened. Again, there's no proof or no evidence of the emails or what he was told, but it just kind of feels like to me, like Keemstar may be just exaggerating the situation to make it sound worse. It also is strange that like, I understand being annoyed by the double standards because it's very clear YouTube's terms of services, they pick and select who gets to be affected by them. Like Gabby Hanna gets to monetize her videos while she's smoking weed while other creators can't show that on their channel because they'll get to be monetized. They have to like do it off screen and then talk about it. So, I mean, there is definitely double standards in YouTube's terms of service and like, but I don't think that like tattling on a fellow creator is the right way to go about getting double standards reversed because I think all this is going to do is make them crack down on double standard, crack down on their rules even harder and it's going to hurt smaller platforms. Like someone like Ethan Klein, even if his YouTube channel gets nuked, he will be okay. He can start a new one. He can start a Patreon. He has Teddy Fresh with his wife. Like he's a multi-millionaire. So like even if his channel gets destroyed, it's not, it won't kill him, but it could kill smaller creators. And it could really crack down on the commentary space as a whole. But let's go to his next post. So he deleted that post and then he posted on Twitter again a video saying that H3 Productions had a second strike on their channel and that that meant that they probably couldn't post again for a couple of days or something. Which like if he knows the terms of service as well as he says he does then he should know this already. And also what's interesting here is that Keemstar reported this before H3 Productions reported this. And according to Ethan Klein, Keemstar reported this before they even knew about it, which leads people to ask, how did Keemstar know? Obviously he's the person that tattled, um, which he has not ever denied in this. They've, there's a whole bunch of back and forth that I'm not gonna go through because I don't care. But Ethan claims that Keemstar reported it before he knew about it, which would imply that Keemstar knew about it before Ethan did because he was involved in it. Either he, did the strike or he was talking to YouTube about the strike, but like, and it's, of course there's no evidence of this, but it is kind of feels like a self report that he posted this story before H3H3 H3 was even able to post about it or know about it. So like, it's suspicious and makes you wonder if he wasn't involved. That's all I'm saying. Keemstar also says in this video that Ethan bullies other creators and like, here's the thing. I do agree that sometimes Ethan crosses a line on his channel because I think what Ethan does, because he's been on the platform for so long, <laughs> he's been on the platform for so long, long before all of these rules came into play. He speaks very hyperbolically. Like in his video about Keemstar, he said that Keemstar is dating a child. But also the other thing is that usually Ela and Dan are there on the podcast and they correct him. They're like, okay, well, you can't say she's a child. She's not actually a child. And Ethan was like, of course, I don't think she's a child. She's 20 years old. She's obviously an adult, but I'm just saying she's young enough to be his child, which like, again, I think that we take everything so literally on YouTube. So it's tricky to see the line. Like I can watch that and tell that Ethan's joking, but I'm not sure if other people will. And I do think that P word allegations are a huge deal. But again, Ethan said like, point blank period in the video. I am not accusing Keemstar of being a P word. I just think this relationship is inappropriate. I watched the clip. The clip is up on his YouTube channel. 
Um, the original video has been removed for nudity and sexual content. And when I read the nudity and sexual content terms of service, they really talk about things being posted for sexual gratification purposes and it really doesn't talk about like it it's nothing that was in the clip because i watched the podcast to do research for my last video so i think it must be about the phone call because i don't believe the phone call is in the clip they posted on their highlights channel so i think it must be something about that but again I mean, I guess it could be something about like pretending that somebody that it's not without being explicit about it could be, violate some sort of rule, but like not the sexual content one, unless again, we're talking about Keemstar's small dick allegedly being mentioned. It's just like, I don't, I don't know what <laughs> term of service he violated and until Ethan can speak about it, I guess he's probably doing his own investigation in the back end to figure out what specifically was said that was wrong so that they can write it. And I'm assuming they'll discuss it when they come back, but like I said, I do believe that Ethan crosses lines sometimes, but I think we all cross lines sometimes. And I think that, like, you have to be able to take a joke if you're going to come on here and start fighting people like Ethan and Keemstar are. And I also think that when it comes down to it, Keemstar basically admits to reporting to YouTube. Not fully, of course. He would never fully admit it. There's no proof that he did it. But just look at the timeline of events and it's kind of clear and the fact that he posted this video basically ratting out uh h3 productions to susan and team youtube like what what else is it and like like i said this has bigger consequences than just keemstar and ethan klein they're two millionaires who are out here doing whatever the fuck they want but when it comes down to it like i don't think here's the thing Ethan didn't do anything wrong in this situation. Did he cross the line? Did he say something he shouldn't have said? Maybe, but like, I also think that like everyone knows that he was joking and everyone knows that he has his vitriol towards Keemstar and like, this isn't negatively affecting Keemstar in any way. Keemstar knew that he was gonna get shit when he talked about his 20 year old girlfriend. He covered all of his bases in the podcast. He said like, well, we, she's not a fan. There's no, there's no issue with us, our age gap. She's a legal adult, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like he literally covered all the bases because he knew he was going to get shit for this. And so it's like, why would you put your girlfriend through this and yourself through this by doing this if you knew you were going to get shit for it? I can tell you why. Because this 40 year old man wanted to gloat about having a 20 year old girlfriend. About as Banks, FaZe Banks said it, sliding into some fresh cheeks. And of everything in the podcast, I think that's the most disgusting thing that's talking about sexual gratification that should be striked. Now, they don't put their podcast on YouTube, it's on Mom's Basement, so they can sort of the fuck they want, but like, they cross just as many lines as Keemstar does, or as Ethan Klein does, they just do it on a different platform where they're getting paid millions of dollars by Spotify to be a Spotify original, so like, it's hard for me to shit on Ethan here for crossing lines when Keemstar does the same thing just on a different platform. Like, but again, the issue here is that when Keem, like I personally just think that like as creators, there's like an unwritten rule of not striking someone else's content unless it is absolutely necessary. There have been so many creators that have striked um, commentary channels for fair, what, what should be fair use and what should be critique. There are, you know, striking someone for something like this for like making a joke about your small dick is just like so small dick energy if we're being real. And again, when you start abusing the strike system, what happens is you hurt smaller creators because now what's gonna happen is you have these two huge um, influencers who are going back and forth, who are abusing the strike system, who are gonna start a war with each other and it's going to affect smaller creators and it's going to limit what the commentary um, system as a whole can say. People are already having to censor their content. I've already had my Gabby Hanna video was demonetized, my original one that got, it's like one of my most viewed videos recently got 7,000 views, it was demonetized the second I posted it. My Anna Campbell video was demonetized, which is another huge video on my channel. So like for, it, this isn't how I make a living, because I have a full-time job because I can't afford to make a living off YouTube right now. But like, still the idea that those videos were demonetized when I was talking, because I was talking about what? The abuse, talking about literal abuse. Like, it's just like, these things are just going to keep cracking down and hurting small creators. And we're gonna have to fucking come up with more cr creative ways to say essay on the R word because we can't report the news anymore without getting strikes or getting demonetized and something like this, I just think Keemstar is like, even if you think that what Ethan did was wrong, 
Keemstar has done the same shit. So like, I can't like, they're both in the wrong. And what Keemstar did was the ultimate wrong. He striked a channel for personal gain because of a personal vendetta. Because if anyone else had said that shit, he wouldn't have said anything. He has been guilty of accusing people of being the P word without proof in the past. So like, and again, Ethan never said that. So it just kind of feels like he tattled. He did a strike against another creator for because of a personal beef and now it's gonna hurt the rest of the YouTube community as a whole. It's just gonna make things more strict for smaller creators and it's gonna hurt them and Ethan and Keemstar will keep making millions of dollars because they have other things outside of YouTube. And so like that's where I think that like this is stupid and Keemstar tattling to YouTube is pathetic. Like he could have made that video complaining about Ethan being an asshole and the double standards on YouTube without involving YouTube. And also I think like he literally admits to sending multiple emails to like YouTube about Ethan violating terms of services. And it's just like, all you're going to do here is make Ethan a martyr, just so you know. If you get his channel taken down, all you're going to do is make him a martyr and make him the victim of YouTube's terms of services and the victim of you. And it's not gonna do anything but hurt the rest of the community. Keemstar also claims to be like against deplatforming creators. Like he has defended Jake Paul and James Charles in the past. So like, I don't, it's very clear that this is such a personal beef for him. Like this is the problem with so many commentary channels is that they let their personal opinion get in the way of what's right and wrong. Like I personally, in this situation, I like Ethan more than I like Keemstar, but I can see how, like I've watched the podcast before and been like, oh, I, can't, I don't know if you can really say that. Like he says James Charles is the P word all the time, not the P-E-D-O word, but the per word. See, like this is all I have to talk now on my channel. Um, and like that is not been proven in a court of law. So I don't think you're allowed to say that. So I do think he crosses lines and I do think that Ethan doesn't really care about the rules. Um, but I also think that like the terms of service are so fucking strict for no reason. And YouTube picks and chooses. Like this is a YouTube issue, not an Ethan versus Keemstar issue, but Keemstar is using YouTube and it's terms of services to fuck around with Ethan and it's gonna end up fucking around other creators. And I don't like it. I just think we shouldn't be striking other people's channel for stuff like small dick jokes and talking about whether or not you dating a 20 year old is inappropriate. Like, I think there was another video on his channel that was removed, but I'm not sure what it was. And it's just like, I, <laughs> like, I don't know how far back their beef goes, but I know it goes back far. And I know that this is not the way to handle it. I think that striking someone's channel over something so fucking shitty like this is, ridiculous. I mean, the YouTube terms of services in general are so vague and strict that you get demonetized or stricken for anything. So it'll be interesting to see what Ethan says when he does come back. As you know, when you get two strikes, you can't post for seven days. So they won't have any podcasts up this week, but it'll, I'm assuming he'll make some sort of statement when he comes back. I'm assuming he's going to figure out exactly what was said that got him a strike. But like at the same time, he's now living on the verge of if he gets one more strike, his channel could be taken down forever. And again, if that happens, that's, he'll be fine, but it's the smaller creators that are gonna end up being hurt by this. And I think Keemstar is abusing the system for personal beef and that's not okay. Like commentary is a tricky situation to be in and Ethan has kind of delved more into that since Frenemies where they talked about David Dobrik and Dom, Dur Dom Dirty Dom, whatever his name is, Seth and um, James Charles. And like, these are all things that they brought attention to. I don't care if you agree with all their points on it, but they brought more attention to this situation than most people did. And they were the first person to cover the Seth situation before the Insider article came out and everyone else started covering it. So it's like hard for me to see that like Ethan is doing something malicious here. Sure, when he's talking about Keemstar, he's obviously biased, but I don't think anyone watches his content and thinks he's unbiased when talking about James Charles or Keemstar. He says some things that cross the line, but usually Hila and Dan are there to correct him. And again, like, I just think that like, when we start getting strikes for stupid, immature jokes, it's like, what is the future of the terms of service and of YouTube? And why is Keemstar, who was so anti deplatforming out here, tattling on Ethan to YouTube doing. All he's doing is hurting a platform that many people use to make their income and he doesn't care. So that is my perspective. Let me know down below what you think. If you know more about the Keemstar Ethan drama that like is necessary to this, fill me in in the comments below. I would love to learn. I just don't have five hours to watch a video about it. 
And <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about the strikes down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.